are. I've been looking all over for you. I had no idea you came to the library. What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> studying. That was kind of obvious. <laughs> you know I'm not the brightest tool in the shed. No, wait, that's sharpest. Uh, anyways, what I came to pester you about, or, well, humbly ask you, it's for my after school year class. We have to basically come up with a personal questionnaire that has a ranking system. So, depending on your score, I will be able to categorize what kind of girl you like. <laughs> It's kind of hard to explain, but the idea came to me late one night when I was trying to figure out my type, and I was so fixated on the fact that it had to be linear, but I was missing the bigger picture. Love isn't linear. It's not a straight line. It can go in any direction it wants to. So first, we start in the center of a circle and we move outwards based on our responses. Then, eventually, you will end up in one of five different categories. Genius, right? <sighs> oh, sorry, I'll keep my voice down now. <laughs> so, it seems like something you want to do, yeah? <laughs> and then I promise I'll leave you to your boring box, huh? <laughs> So the five categories are as follows. Words of affirmation. You love it when you're being complimented or praised for your efforts. You are very responsive to the thoughts and opinions of others and value them very much. Or two, acts of servitude. If actions speak louder than words to you, this might be your lover to be. <laughs> If your lover is willing to play the role of caretaker within reason, you will find yourself very appreciative of their efforts. Number three, receiving gifts. Nothing says someone is thinking and loving you more than receiving the perfect gift with your name all over it. It could be small gifts throughout the week or thoughtful tokens of love. Easy and makes you melt just like that. 4. Quality time. There is nothing better than getting undivided attention with the one you love. No phones or any kind of distractions. Just you and them connecting on a personal level. Doing activities together and being close. Or 5. Physical touch. Physical touch. The feeling of being held, kissed, or even having your hair played with lets you know that you're loved. If your partner shows you this often, you can be sure to be a happy bunny if this is your primary way of showing and receiving love. So that's all five categories, and based on the responses you give me, I'll be able to narrow down what you like, and then you can do with that what you will. Are you ready? The questions will be quite general, then I'll slowly work them down into more specific things. Delio? <laughs> hmm. If you need a quick pick-me-up, would you prefer if your partner planned a day out with you, got you a present that you've always wanted, asked what you needed help with, and what you would like to do. Spend the day at home with you being snuggled up together and watch a movie. Gave you a little pep talk on what's happening with your life right now. Hmm. Okay, so not that one or that one. That narrows it down pretty well. Hmm. What out of these options would bring you the most satisfaction in the scenarios? Spending time alone to yourself to focus on tasks that need to be done, knowing it will be done correctly the first time. Having your partner help you in the task 
and enjoying the challenge together, knowing you may have to repeat your actions due to a mistake. Asking your partner to carry the task out for you, which means you can focus on other things that you're better at dealing with. So, number one, on your own. Two, with your partner, but it might be done wrong. Three, you delegate the task to your partner. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. <laughs> As for your day-to-day life, would you consider yourself very independent? I can get stuff done for myself and even help out others. I prefer getting help when I need it, but for the most part, I could push through. I need help often, and I'm not afraid to ask. The more help, the lighter the work. I am completely dependent and have a tendency to pass on my role. <laughs> that one? Ooh, are you sure? <laughs> I wouldn't have marked you up for a type like that. <laughs> Maybe you're a surprise after. You never did say what kind of girl you think you like. Hmm, chill and casual like you? (laughs) I suppose that's the best if you get someone who can mimic you. Although, never someone who perfectly mirrors you. Or, I feel like that could become a bit stale. A bit of diversity in the relationship should be welcomed. Different perspectives and viewpoints different goals, hobbies, that kind of thing. (laughs) That way you can grow and learn about each other's likes and dislikes, how they work best, and in a relationship, you can even find things out about yourself you had no idea about. (sighs) It's been a while since I've been in a relationship, though. I know it's just a silly project, but I had lots of fun trying to research this all. You'd be surprised about how much money gets poured into the love industry. From questionnaires to quizzes to advice on how to fix your relationships. Everybody's looking for love, but they aren't ready to love themselves first, huh? People get so hyper-fixated on finding the one that they love that they'll just rush into any old relationship and hope it works out. But you'll know if it's truly working or not. It's just sad watching people hurt themselves over and over. And don't get me started on those who beg to go into relationships. I mean, isn't it weird if you're having to beg someone to go on a date with you or be with you? That's just not right. Deep down, they know it too. People are weird. I don't know why they couldn't all be like you. I mean, you have a great head on those broad shoulders of yours. You're smart, you're hardworking when you have to be, able to take a break so you don't overwork yourself. Honestly, when was your last relationship? I'm surprised you aren't dating someone right now. Ooh, a nasty breakup. It happens. Never see it coming either. That's the worst part. It's all sunshine and roses before, well, they ruin it all. But no point in dwelling. They're lost, and it's not like you would want them back after they hurt you so badly. Just gotta take a deep breath and make sure you're good. Then all is good after that. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. One more question, and we should see what out of the five categories you are. When showing affection to another, what comes easiest to you? I prefer verbalizing my affection, praising, or giving positive affirmations. Physical touch is not necessary. I would rather hug them and praise them at the same time. Words simply won't do it justice. 
but actions can't. Ah, the hugging type then. Well, in that case, thank you for helping me out and taking the test for me. Can I rely on you to be my pet guinea pig if I have any more questionnaires like these to do? Yeah, awesome, that's perfect. <laughs> well, you were pretty conclusive, as much as you might not like to admit it. You are a physical, touchy-feely person, so you need to get yourself someone who doesn't mind huggles and kisses and hand-holding, even if it is a little lewd. <laughs> well, it's interesting. If this questionnaire goes down well at the club, then I suppose I'll have to do category-specific ones. I trust I'm allowed to come running to you once it's complete, <laughs> even if you are studying. <laughs> Thanks again. I really mean it. If you need anything, you can always count on me, okay? Good luck with your studying.